So Biden's poll numbers are sinking right now. It appears to have been sinking ever since the Afghanistan situation where he pulled out. Of course, the pullout, it was kind of like pulling off a Band-Aid. You just kind of had to get it off. You know, could it have been better? Probably. Uh, and so the way that the media covered it was entirely negative on the part of Joe Biden. And obviously, the media controls the narrative because they tell you what's going on. And so you believe what they say. So the media came out essentially entirely against him. And that has ended up docking him uh, some points. He was enjoying a solid like 50 plus approval rating. He was in the honeymoon phase of his presidency. He's not Donald Trump. So people were happy. But now it appears that the honeymoon phase is dying down. It says Biden confronts sinking poll numbers. President Biden is facing strong political headwinds as troubles mount for his domestic agenda. A slew of recent national polls have shown the president's one strong approval numbers dipping across the board. And a poll released Tuesday showed Biden's approval in Iowa, a traditional swing state, had dropped 12 points since June to 31%. And poor polling comes as Biden's signature spending effort is on shaky ground in Congress as thousands of migrants from Haiti and elsewhere gather at the southern border and as the White House works to get the coronavirus pandemic back under control. The honeymoon is definitely over for Biden, said Dan Eberhardt, a GOP fundraiser. He's betting voters will forget the problems by the time the midterms come around. He's going to find a lot of takers of that bet on the Republican side. Biden's problem is he can't keep his coalition together no matter what he does. The more he tries, the more he hands issues to Republicans. But that's obviously a Republican fundraiser, so you can't really take that super seriously. But it certainly is concerning what's going on. Says Biden had enjoyed a steady approval rating in the low 50% range for most of the first seven months of his presidency. According to a 538 average of polls, the president was buoyed by a stable of economic recovery, uh, a stable economic recovery, declining coronavirus infections and deaths, and early policy accomplishments like the passage of a $1.9 trillion stimulus package. Things have taken a turn uh, for uh, for Biden in recent weeks. His approval ratings began to take a hit amid the messy withdrawal of U.S. forces from Afghanistan, the subsequent ISIS attack in Kabul that killed 13 American service members. Quinnipiac poll, uh, University poll released last week found 42% of participants approved of Biden's overall performance, with his approval on foreign policy dropping significantly. And it appears another Gallup poll, 43 Morning consult had fell from 51 to 48. That's actually a high number for him. So he's dropped from uh, above 50 to now in the low 40s, which is definitely a big drop. The honeymoon phase does seem to essentially be dying down for Joe Biden. This is a bad sign for the midterms. And the problem is he hasn't really had any accomplishments. The biggest accomplishment I would say is that was good is just pulling out of Afghanistan. It's pretty much all you have. But the way it went down wasn't pretty, so the media is going to be super against you, although they'd be against you anyways. Obviously, they are owned and paid by the military-industrial complex. So big kudos to Biden on that because it took some massive balls. Definitely Obama did not have those kinds of balls. So, you know, that's very cool that he did that. Does he even give a shit? I don't really know. I mean, he doesn't have, you know, it's split in the Senate. I don't know what the Senate vacancy numbers are this time around, but usually the Democrats suck ass at winning Senate elections. So I just expect they're going to suck no matter what, whatever the projections are. I look at it as like, just expect the Democrats to be underwhelming. The majority in the House is razor thin. They're probably going to lose it this time around, I would expect. So they're kind of fucked. They might not, I don't even think they're going to have either houses, uh, you know, either, you know, level of Congress. But, you know, it's too hard to predict everything right now, although I think that that's a possible outcome. The only possibility that I could see being in favor of Democrats is the suppress uh, suppressing of the vote by the Republicans, because I think that them just saying that every election is rigged is suppressing their outcome, their voter turnout. So that's the only thing I could really see. Otherwise, I feel like Joe Biden hasn't really done anything that he could go out and be like, look what I did for you guys vote for me and my party he doesn't really have that the bipartisan bill sucks ass and i mean you know what i mean that that's complete trash it's not even fully through um you haven't got the reconciliation bill you haven't got 15 dollars minimum wage you haven't done anything serious um all the things you've done are very minor that you would expect any president to do through executive action so there's not really been any tangible victories other than pulling out of afghanistan which Due to the way it was marketed, it was and the way it was executed, it's not as palatable 
uh, for people. So, you know, then the question is, forget the midterms, think about his potential reelection. Is he even going to run for president in 2024? I don't know. There's so many vo uh, variables. Is Trump going to run again? Trump came really close to beating Biden. Biden barely won. So that's dangerous. If he doesn't run, is Kamala Harris going to run? I would assume so. If Kamala Harris does run, are we running under traditional parameters in which it's taboo to run against an incumbent? Uh, because she would be the vice president, not the president. So is anybody willing to challenge her in a primary? What are Kamala Harris's electability odds? I would say extremely low. Uh, maybe even in the Democratic Party. So there's so many variables going on here. Will people forget by the time uh, you know, his term's over? The problem is there's too much of a standstill going on in Congress to where he can't really, because he, he doesn't want to, he's not going to get anything tangible through that he can market to voters, right? How did, how did the Democrats win those two seats in the Senate? Well, they won those two seats by saying, we're going to give you uh, a stimulus check. We're going to give you two Gs. That's how they did it, right? We're going to give you relief from this pandemic. Now what are you going to do? You don't have shit. You, know, you can't market anything that you've done. So it just puts it in a, a tough position. But he's definitely got to figure this out. And if he really wants to, like, the reconciliation bill would be something like, we invested $3 trillion into american infrastructure that would be something that you could you know tout but is that going to get through i don't know i think he could easily do it